and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusu. All over the world, vaccinations resulted in a 73% drop in death from measles between 2000 and 2018, saving an estimated 23.2 million people. In spite of the vaccine and its success in reducing deaths globally, there were more than 140,000 measles deaths in 2018. Most of the victims were less than five years old. After observing that almost 40 million children had missed at least one measles shot in 2021, in November 2022, the World Health Organization described measles as an imminent threat in every region of the world. In December of 2021 in Nigeria, there were over 10,000 confirmed cases and 109 deaths. Measles is a very infectious viral disease. One person can potentially affect 12 to 18 others in a vulnerable population. My guest on the show is a consultant public health physician, Dr. Jamiu Ganiyu. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So that was 109 deaths in December of 2020, 2021. Yes. But as at October this year, 234 deaths, 18,500 cases. So it went up. Obviously, the pandemic had something to do with those missed um, measles vaccines. At what point should a child have his first measles vaccine? And if he misses his measles vaccine, can he make up for it? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the first time a child should have his first dose should be at nine months. Nine months. Then, secondly, there have been a review of the uh, national immunization schedule, and uh, any child that misses first uh, uh, dose at nine months has opportunity of having another at 15 months. Okay. That is in line with that. And apart from the 15 months, usually every three to four years, there are usually what you call supplementary immunization activities, whereby government carry out a kind of uh, outreach where uh, people are expected to take their children on the five to get vaccinated. So there are always provision for people to get access to uh, measles vaccination in the country. Okay, so is it that those who missed the vaccination can now come and get? Yeah. Or is it like polio, whereby whether you got it or not, you can come get another one? No, ideally, you know, we, uh, we were, there's what you call routine immunization schedule, which you expect every child uh, born in Nigeria uh, I expected to, every infant uh, under one year, expected to start uh, getting their first dose at nine months. It is part of our routine immunization schedule. Then, recently, we introduced the 15 months, which is expected that parents will take their child to any available facility, right from the primary care, secondary, and tertiary facility, where they're expected to get uh, their vaccine at nine months, 15 months. Then, routinely, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency with other partners, organize a kind of supplementary immunization every three to four years to ensure that those children that are missed or those students that are uh, developed to call primary vaccine failure have opportunity to get vaccinated. And usually they carry out in selected facility in their respective communities where children, uh, parents are advised to take their children for vaccination. That is for the under five. What is primary vaccine failure? Yes. Uh, usually, um, it is expected, it's based on science, that if uh, the, uh, the first dose, it, it is expected that um, the seroconversion, what I mean by seroconversion, that those people that would, vaccination is different from being immune. Okay. Yes. Somebody can be vaccinated, but not immune. That is, develop antibody mm -hmm. against measles in case of any attack. It is uh, found that first dose, only 85%, of the children in the court will get immune. Okay. Yes. So that is why there is usually allowance for the second chance, which is at 15 months. It is expected that following the second dose, we may be able to achieve the 95% and above. Usually what happens that during vaccination, as I've said, only 85% for first will get. And for us to achieve herd immunity, that is the expected threshold of population immunity that can prevent uh, Mizu circulation and transmission among children should be from 95 and above. Yes, they said 95. Yes. But, that is high. Yes, but 
Usually, first zone can, we cannot achieve that. The reason is because I said one, well, there may be missed opportunities. Some children may be missed during that period. So not every parent take their children to their facility. So we may have problem with that. Then secondly, some of the 15% of a cohort has, may likely develop cerebral con have, have problem with you know, being immune. Issue of cerebral conversion, they may have challenge with that. And that is why uh, in so doing, we give allowance for the second dose, which has been approved by the national program. So at 15 months, it is expected that a child will go for the second dose. Okay. So at that level... So 12 months, yes, then 15, 15 months. months. Yes. It Two is, doses. Yes. So it is expected that as that second dose, uh, uh, such bad cohort will have achieved that 95% and above. And that is the minimum required for us to be able to prevent an outbreak. Okay. You form. say minimum requirement. Yes. So every child, 12 months, 15, 15 months, months, there may be one other one. Well, yeah. No, after 15 months, then routinely, there is usually an outreach, a kind of supplement immunization. There's no a kind of campaign whereby, in case we have missed opportunity, some children miss their immunization, or those that fail to seroconvert, we still have another opportunity during that round to get vaccinated. Do, do you think you're making any impact, you know, I mean, getting people to come for this 15 month one? I, I have not heard any mother talk about a second dose of measles well, for her child. No, uh, it is there, but the challenge is if you look at our routine immunization coverage, has not been encouraging. And it varies from one part of the country to the other. When you may be talking about 80% and above in somewhere in Lagos, maybe in other parts of the country, maybe getting 60. It has been an issue, and that is why allowances are always made for campaigns, to so carry out national immunization campaign whereby such people can have opportunity to get their child immunized. You get it. So especially, it also have, it serves as an opportunity for those at the outreach areas and other areas to get, you know, you know, get vaccinated. But do, there is do adults months. get measles? Yes, especially they do, they do but in, in a country where. They don't, uh, they don't have a kind of a plan, a national immunization schedule. Okay, like, so that country is yeah, not Nigeria. Yeah, no, no, no. Like we, we have that right from when the child is at less than one year old, so we give them. So well, it's only adults that maybe if they miss such opportunity or, or they fail to sell or convert, it may, may, they may likely develop that at, at uh, maybe at late uh, childhood or in, in adulthood. It is, measles can still prevail at that age. I know that... Um, Measles shows up in these little bumps yes. all over the body. Yes. Apart from that, are there other symptoms? Yes. You are, yeah, you see measles, the symptoms of measles are uh, mainly, majorly like upper respiratory tract infection. You have high grade fever. You mentioned rash. Then there was called the three C's. They have cough. That is, they have uh, conjunctivitis, that is redness of the eyes. And they have what you call coryza, that is running nose. Okay. Those are some of the uh, symptoms. Then, in case uh, they develop complication, uh, usually the complication may arise after two or three weeks. Uh, they may have diarrhea. Uh, they, may, they may even develop pneumonia. And the pneumonia has been associated with uh, maybe secondary bacterial infection. Then they can even have um, uh, uh, blind, uh, that, that is what you call cornea um, uh, scarring. Cornea abrasion. Uh, yeah, they may even develop, and that may lead to blindness. And that is why the issue of vitamin A comes in. We'll talk about that. Then also encephalitis, which is common among the older children and adults, that they may have future suggestions of meningitis. But, but these so, are the end stages, so that right? The complications. So well. if it's a child has a rash, yes, and it's for a week, it's not gone. Yes. The coughing, the runny nose, the fever, that's enough time to react and say, ah, this combination of symptoms is very suspect. Yeah. Let me take this child to the hospital. Yeah. When the child is brought to the hospital, yeah. can you do anything for him at that yeah, time? Yeah, they can. Based on the assessment, uh, you know, as I've said, the common thing with them against the area. So uh, following assessment, they will look at it. They may, they may be required to, uh, to be, uh, they may be given, uh, they will require vitamin A and supplementation. And also if they look at that, that the child is uh, dehydrated, or, you know, not looking fine. Such can may be rehydrated. And if the, uh, the nutrition is not looking adequate, such child may be supported. Also, another thing, if they notice that symptoms are suggestive of pneumonia, 
such I may also be treated with antibiotics. Okay, so what so, I'm hearing from yeah, you now yeah. is symptomatic treatment. Symptomatic treatment. There's nothing to really make the measles go. No, no, it will resolve on its own. That it will resolve, but you need to manage likely complication. But that's why the hallmark of it is people should get themselves vaccinated. As much as people are not vaccinated, anybody exposed to the virus, there is that likelihood of that person getting infected. Why do you um, usually talk about malnutrition in the same sentence as measles? What's the relationship? Yeah, the relationship is that one, you know, this is a viral infection. Uh, in every viral infection, a child may, may lose appetite. That's one, may not be eating as supposed to be. Then diarrhea is common with measles. Okay. And that is, uh, so it's very That's easy. Bad. Uh, very easy for if a child is not properly managed, it may take that child into malnutrition. And that is why, that is why such kind of person... And the child may die from something some other than the measles. Exactly. Exactly. So that is that. Okay, so um, I'm not encouraging anyone to miss vaccinations. But can an unvaccinated child survive a mild bout of measles? Well, I without do, complications. I, 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 I don't think so. Because uh, the, the chances of that child getting infected, if he or she is not vaccinated, is very, very high. And, and based on that, that child may also, the chances of that child also gets, getting uh, a complication for that infection is also higher. Is also higher based on the treatment. So let's assume a child has had two vaccinations for measles, yes. and it's it's fine, it's caught, it's good. Um, how long does the immunization last against measles? Why it is li uh, it's lifelong? That just for, for oh for, for life for life. It's, Some it's, good news. Yeah, yes, yes. They don't need a kind of booster or whatever. It's just for life. Can the child have? too much of this vaccination? I, I don't think Because so. you know when they pass a child, yeah. maybe from mom to aunt or guardian or whatever, and they say, oh, has this child had been vaccinated? I don't know. Uh, where is the card? I don't know. Okay, let's just vaccinate him. Whether that could, you know, pose a problem. Well, for I the don't child. think it may pose, but uh, ideally, you know, uh, measles usually is given in the left, uh, left upper arm. So usually uh, the scar, Okay, can there'll also, be a scar. Yeah, that may be a scar. That's a good one. one. <laughs> so so, so uh, when a person has had a COVID vaccination, for example, COVID-19, yeah. they, they told us, they warned us time and again, it does not mean you cannot have the infection. Yeah. It simply means it will not be as serious as it would have been if you didn't get yeah. the, the, uh, the shot. Is, that, is it the same with measles? Yeah, yeah, there have been that. Uh, okay, another thing I want to say is that getting measles vaccination does not mean a child cannot still get measles, which we've seen in, in, in some instances. But it is believed that such child may likely not develop the severe form of measles as compared to someone who has not been vaccinated. So that has been, and as I've said, mo most likely another thing that may have may have resorted to in that, maybe because that child may have not been seroconverted. As I've said, somebody may be vaccinated, but that person is not, is not immune, immune. Which means his body didn't react yeah, exactly. to Exactly, so that is why there may be room for another dose. That's why there is that second Okay, dose. let's take a short break. Yeah. When we come back, other interesting questions. Please stay with us. We will be back right after the break. Welcome back. We're looking at measles on Health Matters on Channels Television. You can call 0808-054-2233 for questions on measles. You can also tweet at CTV underscore Mary A or simply send email to moalale at channelstv.com. Dr. Jamie Ugani is in the house and I want to ask you, um, in January, NCDC said they were 254 cases, confirmed cases of measles. But then they ran out of measles testing reagent. What's the situation now? And, and can this affect any plan we have to eliminate measles in the country? 
No, I'm not sure that uh, because there is a, a stock out of testing region may affect that. Because uh, in epidemiology, it's not every, every case we test. Okay. Yeah, just we can diagnose measles clinically. We can, that's what you call standard case definition, especially if you are dealing with an outbreak, uh, which we call epidemiologically linked. We can also do that. Occasionally, it, we, why we result in testing at times is that maybe uh, we do a random sampling at times. Maybe when you are suspecting, just be very sure. They just clinically can diagnose so that. So the vaccine is what we really, really need. Really, really, yes, that's, that's can, what Can matters. you make it, uh, can you do more awareness around that second dose? I think there's a fundamental yeah. problem there. Yeah. And but people don't know so much about it. I agree. Even with the first, you know, as I've said, our routine immunization has been a major problem. People don't, this uh, uh, seeking behavior of Nigeria is, is, something, is a, a, a big issue. Many people don't like going to the hospitals, and that is why there have been different uh, uh, packages, a kind of... But the thing is, it's free. It's free. Let me quickly take this call from okay. Yusuf. Okay. Hello, Yusuf. Yes, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Yusuf Olamele Kwadidema from Lagos. Thank yes, you for um, calling. Compliment of the season to my doctor and to the anchor. Um, my, I have two questions. Number one, what are the environmental uh, causes of this, I mean, that trigger this uh, virus? you know, that cause uh, this um, um, uh, misery that we are discussing today. And number two, um, I, I didn't know, I think uh, science evolved during the house. I didn't know other ways, you know, that uh, uh, science has uh, brought about that would be different from this, uh, I mean, uh, needle injection. Can't we do oral? Because even I thought they do fear of that, fear of, uh, that uh, injection. So that's my submission. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yusuf. I will turn it over to the doctor. Yeah. Really, can't we swallow something like uh, polio, polio yeah, vaccine? Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you just said. I, I think the fear of injection is another thing. That the fear of side effects, that is what you call uh, adverse event following injection. Those mm -hmm. have been some of them. They are, they are not, they are, they have not been reported cases of uh, side effects. They are defense. very few. They are very few. So I think uh, the... The major thing, I agree with the fact that if it is oral, it will have been easier, but we've not, uh, science have not really developed that, have not been searched. Uh, the only available is just uh, the injection. But if you look at it very well, compared to me, uh, 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 polio, that you need to give about five or six times as much as, you know, just two or three, and you are done. You give at nine months, and we give at what? At 15 months, as I've said, and during campaigns. So it's not really more. We all take injection for different uh, disease conditions, so we shouldn't be. And... It is not, it's subcutaneous, you know. It's not the, the normal intramuscular. It doesn't go right through. Yeah, so it's something that we can just, somebody, a baby can just bear with. And if you look at it, uh, among the uh, vaccines that have been given to children, we have others. We have uh, the tetanus, we have the, uh, the penta, which you call the And penta. the measles all, is combined, yeah, combined. MMR. No, so you give three no, at we once. We don't even give MMR. We only give measles in Nigeria. Oh, the okay. MMR, no it, MMR. Moms and rubella, we don't do that. It's okay. only on special... A request, but we, what the government give free is that of measles. That measles. But if you want the rubella also, it's not part of our routine immunization, uh, immunization schedule that they give free. Somebody so need to apply Yusuf is that. also concerned about, he's asking what are the environmental factors that bring about causing measles infection? Well, uh, yes, it's, it's, if you look at it, it's, uh, in Nigeria, measles is endemic. It's only uh, occasional. It has been a recurrent thing that we have outbreaks here and there. And as I've said, it's a respiratory infection, and meaning that an, a child, an infected person can transmit it through coughing, through sneezing, aerosol, contamination of surfaces, and so on. But where does it come from? Is it a dirty environment? No, it's not really a dirty. It's, 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 it's something that lives in the respiratory system. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, it's, it's a respiratory infection that lives in the respiratory tract. So anybody that has signs and symptoms of that, and usually I want, the point I want to make is that if, if a child is showing signs of measles, the most critical point is four days before the rash and four days after the rash. That is when that child has there is high, the rapid you know, pro, um, reproduction of the virus. And that we call it eye infectiousness. And that is when that child can transmit give it to somebody, give it to somebody else. else at that period, four days before the rash and four days after the rash. That is a very critical period in which a child, that is why we encourage a child that has measles to be isolated as much ah, as possible. Okay. It should be, be isolated. isolated from other. If not, before you know, every other children will get infected with it. 
I would have loved to go on, but I want to take a side journey here and ask you something that has really been on my mind. We, uh, Nigeria has done away with all restrictions, pre- and post-boarding tests for COVID-19. And, uh, you know, as it were, we are free as a bird, the way we were before. But China is having a lot of cases now. And they've opened their doors for travel. Are we doing anything about that here? Uh, I, uh, okay, thank you. I want to believe that the uh, recent pronouncement was made based on the available epidemiological data. If you look at it in Nigeria, we are not recording cases. Even when we have their minima, uh, maybe that will have informed her. But sorry, maybe the authority will have forgotten that uh, the world is a global village. Anybody can move from one place to the other. Because just and, the other day, some yeah. Chinese... Um, Passengers yeah. tested positive on an aircraft on the way to Italy. Yeah. And you know that's cause for concern. I agree with you. And I, as I'm saying, maybe the pronouncement was made before the current event at the global level. Uh, and it's actually is a good opportunity for our, the appropriate NCDs to, to review our, our, our travel advisory, uh, especially look, considering the fact that uh, China just is out its uh, quarantine measures and the uh, uh, travel advisory. Uh, usually, I will, I will advise if we can follow suit what Italy and other countries are doing. The U.S. Uh, we know, yeah, Chinese are our friends. They have a lot of investment here. They work here. But well, that doesn't mean we should throw caution to the wind. So my advice is that if we can maybe insist that, especially in countries where uh, they are still living at high-risk countries like China and so on, so that we, they should, we can institute the 72 hours uh, testing before coming to the country which is being implemented currently in Italy, so that for those that are positive, they can be isolated for like seven days when they come into the country. And for those that are uh, negative, they can be isolated for five days and, and for, with proper supervision to be sure. They're especially for those people that are positive, they may now have to be repeat tests to be sure before they are being allowed to mingle with our citizens. I think the, the, the safety of our citizens is very critical, it's very important. And I will advise the appropriate authority to look into that because uh, we know what we are still battling with the economic impact of COVID-19. So I, I won't pray that we should have a repeat of what happened in 2020-21. So I think uh, NCD should try and look at that. If we can also follow suit with what U.S. and other uh, countries are doing in terms of trying to introduce the testing, especially for passengers coming from the iron rigs uh, and them, uh, pandemic zone. I think yeah. it will contribute to I think that would, that yes, would help uh, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Hopefully, the government is listening. Yes, thank thank you. you so much for coming thank to the you. show. That was thank wonderful. You. Thank, you. thank you, Yusuf, for your call. Brilliant questions. And thank you, viewers at home. Enjoy your day. Compliments of the season. I am Mary Alalei.